Winning, winning is so delicious. Yes. All right, happy Tuesday, America. Let's update you on the raid on Mar-a-Lago. We got never before seen footage, roll it. So like Paul Pelosi driving down a two-way street, <laughs> it's pretty obvious that Merrick Garland crossed the line. And now the media realizes their whole narrative is falling apart like a pot roast in a hot tub. Whatever happened to the story about the nukes? Yeah, apparently Trump stole valuable nuclear secrets that he was planning to sell to someone. I don't know about you, but this seems like a strange career transition for a real estate tycoon. <laughs> uh, should I build a new luxury condominium development in Midtown or sell nuclear secrets to Putin? <laughs> it's a tough call. On one hand, you can make a lot of money legally. On the other, you could be executed for treason. <laughs> of course, the media always picks the most absurd crap to peddle about Trump. So what does the media who invested so much in this psychosis do now? They say if you dare criticize the raid, you'll be inciting violence against the FBI, who were busy doing the Lord's work of sniffing Melania's shoes. <laughs> I chose the word shoes. <laughs> and true, there were notable incitements to violence. There were. Remember Michael Beschloss tweeted a photo of the Rosenbergs who were executed for selling nuclear secrets to Moscow? It was a tweet that then General Michael Hayden concurred with by adding, sounds about right. That's two major voices, not calling out the FBI, but suggesting the execution of Trump. But the media ignores that incitement, preferring to call out random nut jobs posting threats on message boards. But I get it, you should see the stuff I post on the My Little Pony forums. <laughs> but if you ever mess with Twilight Sparkle, I'll kill you. <laughs> But let's saunter over to CNN, where Wolf Blitzer, the ugliest of Santa's reindeer, <laughs> interviewed, interviewed Adam Kinzinger, whose last name is German for I cry during tampon commercials. <laughs> and Wolf asked the most leading question you could possibly ask, and no, it wasn't will you marry me. Roll it, Sven. You've seen this joint FBI Department of Homeland Security bulletin it's now warning of what they call unprecedented violent threats in the wake of the search of Mar-a-Lago. Do you hold the former President Donald Trump responsible for inciting his supporters? Yeah, absolutely, 100% Wolf. Any Republican elected official out there that rushes to be the first on television or the first to Twitter to basically condemn the FBI, this stokes that. It's really dangerous, and uh, I, I fear it could get worse. Ah, oh, it could get worse, he fears, or hopes. But this is not journalism. This is emotional propaganda in which the host indulges the damaged psyche of his guests. It's more manipulative than Fox running pizza commercials during my hangover. <laughs> so if you condemn the raid, you're stoking violence, as opposed to Beslos and Hayden actually suggesting Trump is eligible for execution. But who knows more about stoking violence than CNN, who've been denigrating cops every chance they get for the last 10 years? Yet it's Trump's fault for inciting violence because he had somehow invited the raid, which could be the dumbest thing you ever heard that didn't come out of Don Lemon's mouth. <laughs> Even a clod like Adam knows it was the raid that pissed people off. There was no incitement necessary, but he's lost in the rabbit hole of anti-Trump mania. Then when Trump tries to reduce the heat, like a soothing cream applied to Hunter's latest rash. <laughs> I don't know if that was necessary. Listen to Wolf's question and then the answer from Kinzinger. Does it strike you as odd that the man who actually set the fire apparently tried to ask the attorney general to put it out? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's a creepy message, to be honest with you. Just like, frankly, Donald Trump and his supporters have become quite creepy. Uh, in how they're acting and what and what they're threatening. Yeah. You know, when Adam calls someone creepy, it feels like projection. Because <laughs> absolutely, there's nothing creepy about a grown man who cries more than a teething, colicky baby with diaper rash. 
But you start to see it's not Trump who's painting targets on people, but people like Kinzinger who've been a wreck since Trump hit the political scene. Amber Heard hasn't cried as much since she met Johnny Depp. <laughs> it gets worse. It gets worse. When Wolf asks about Liz Cheney, the vice chair of the Jan 6 committee, losing, possibly losing the GOP primary, he said this. I think it shows that the party's in a bad place. Um, look, we are standing up against evil. Liz Cheney is standing up against evil. And I say this, you know, I, I put out this message the other day, which is a lot of people sit around and they, they dream about the day they get to do it. And very few people ever get that chance to really stand up against evil. Yeah, they're fighting evil. What evil is that exactly? Is it terrorists? Is it pedophiles? Is it field gold kickers? No, it's you. If you support Trump, you're evil. If you don't trust the government, you're evil. If you don't trust the media, you're evil. If you think that the FBI or the DOJ has folks in top positions who make political decisions instead of principled ones, you're evil. Meanwhile, if you're a BLM riot rioter, a killer released without bail, a pervert teacher, or the Chinese government, nothing to see here, folks. <laughs> so who's painting targets on people's backs? It's Adam. He's Sherwin <laughs> Williams. <laughs> Remember... Remember, in order to incite violence against people, you have to dehumanize them. It's an old tactic that Charles Krauthammer stated decades ago. The right thinks the left is wrong, but the left thinks the right is evil. What's funny is normally to the left, Liz Cheney would be the evilest of evil. But how quickly the left forget the dead. Now, Adam isn't a lefty, but he's enjoying this strange new respect given from the left. He's like a married man getting hit on by an attractive stranger. Except the attractive stranger is named Wolf and has breath that reeks of polygrip. <laughs> the libs get it. Steering the emotionally damaged Adam toward conclusions no objective Republican would ever agree to. They've exploited his anti-Trump mania to their advantage. Because everywhere he goes, which is basically cable news and Twitter, all this asshat sees are red hats. He has long Trump derangement, and there's no vaccine. But it's given him and Cheney both a victim and hero complex. They're heroes for fighting evil and victims when people call out their BS. And with that, they forget the millions of people who actually liked what Trump did as president. They just aren't as emotionally tied to Trump's personality as these brats are. So will Liz win or lose? She pleaded for Dems to switch parties to help her. And she got a late endorsement from Freddy Krueger. <laughs> plus, plus, she still has some pretty big fans. Liz Cheney stands up for the truth. Uh, and that's got her a lot of uh, heat. Uh, she may lose her position in the party. She may even lose her career as a politician. But that is something to be admired, standing up for the truth. Right now, I'm kind of a fan of Liz Cheney. Yes. <laughs> OJ claims he's a fan. And it makes sense. They do have something in common. Although OJ stabs people in the front. Sunblock at night. Fox News contributor Tom Salou. He filled the hole in my heart and created one in Bin Laden's head. Former Navy SEAL and host of the new great podcast, The Operator, Rob O'Neill. Like the Parthenon, he's famous for his columns. Former federal prosecutor and Fox News contributor Andy McCarthy. And she's like your phone screen, bright, illuminating, and covered in germs. <laughs> Fox News contributor, Cat Tip. <laughs> All right. I got to come to you first, Andy, because you're kind of like the expert in this, aside from me, of course. Man, yeah. Uh, you know, you're, you know, we're pros. Um, what do you make of this joint bulletin? To me, it sounds exactly like the memo about domestic terrorists being teachers. I mean, being parents. Right. You know, the, the joint bulletin on on uh, on um, what did he call it? The uh, the unprecedented threats against the FBI. 
You know, I, I, I just think they're in a they're in a terrible place mm-hmm. right now. <laughs> um, you know, the, the threats obviously are um, what they interpret to be threats mm-hmm. are people who are troubled by what happened in the raid Mm -hmm. and, you know, the fact that they're they're given one story Mm -hmm. about what it's about and then, you know, they get a look at the warrant and it turns out to be about something completely Mm -hmm. different. So I I think when people protest, they want to regard it or they want to portray it as if it were, you know, a threat of of violence. And in the meantime, if you want to see who's been critical of the FBI, you ought to look at the hundreds of pages of reports that have been written by the Justice Department's own inspector general who works for Merrick Garland. He may maybe go down the hall and knock on his door. Are you saying he is a terrorist? Could be. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> but that's the point. There are people within the FBI, the DOJ, who are hypercritical. Tom, I do think you're evil. Me? Yes, you are evil. In this case, I'll make an exception. You should be demonized. Well... You know what I can't stand is the phony indignance that's coming out of the leadership. And that's who everyone is criticizing, including people like you or people like me. When I'm on shows on Fox News, whatever I say, I don't like the leadership. I don't like what Merrick Garland has done. I don't like what Christopher Wray has done and how he won't stand. They won't stand up. They won't, uh, you know, have the courage of their convictions and say what's in the warrant, things like that. So we criticize the leadership. And then they always say, oh, I think you're talking about my agents. Yes. And we're like, no, we're, Actually, I'm talking about you. Yeah. Wait till my agents hear what you said about them. <laughs> it's like, no, we don't like the leadership. How dare you insult the rank and file? I mean, they never stop with that. And we don't have a problem with individual agents. We don't even know. We assume the agents are doing what they're told. Mm-hmm. Plus, we like cops and firemen. You know, they would say, well, are you right-wingers. You're supposed to support law enforcement. We still support law enforcement, cops, firemen. But if you wear a suit into the FBI building, you're not, you know, you're not like a soldier. <laughs> You're kind of in an office, so you're way down on the list. I think you got cops, firemen, basically the, all the, the village people, like, you know, Indian chief, <laughs> cowboy, <laughs> construction <laughs> worker, <laughs> then FBI agent after all those guys. That would have been weird to have FBI agent in the village people. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> so, Rob, yes. you actually fought evil and you killed evil. Mm-hmm. So when you hear Adam, I, I don't know. I mean, Adam Kinsinger, he was in the Air Force, correct? Yes, he, yeah, uh, yeah, pilot. Yeah. He's a friend of mine. Oh, he is. And I think he's. I getting, just trashed him in front of you. Yeah, you just. Uh, yeah, believe me, being in the military, we can take a little bit there. <laughs> but I think what he's doing here is he's taking a little bit of stuff, just a little too personally. That, yes. But he's, he's in. He's in the swamp right now, and the swamp's one of those things where they're dealing with party politics. That the Democrats, they, they know that if you can get someone to say something bad about Trump and Trump supporters, they're going to do what they can. I mean, it's surprising we had uh, OJ up there just now because I'm pretty sure. What he said uh, recently was the same thing as uh, the, uh, something with the Democrats. It's, it's like comparing a battery to a fat girl. Like, it's going to hurt, but I'm going to put my tongue on it anyway. <laughs> <laughs> right? So I don't even know what that <laughs> means. <laughs> but, uh, uh, <laughs> but with... Uh, I'm, trying to, I'm trying to figure out what that means. You know what? Don't explain it to me. I'd rather not know. <laughs> but, with, but then you got... With, uh, with the Cheneys coming out, they're, they're upset because uh, they're in, you know, they've been in the politics forever. And, like, Dick Cheney shouldn't be upset said about anything because he's still rolling in the millions from Halliburton money. Right. And yeah. when he and I, like, he and I, we have something that's, like, not in common. I fought in the war. He dodged a draft. But we do have in common. We both shot someone in the face. <laughs> <laughs> that's true. <laughs> hunting accident. A hunting accident. <laughs> so, Kat, what's your take on this incredible story that just doesn't seem to end? Yeah, I can't handle all of the people talking about Liz Cheney as this champion for the truth. Mm-hmm. I'm like, you mean the princess of the Iraq war? <laughs> like, her and her, truly, it, like, her I dad, know. of course, but also she propagating these lies that led to a war, and then after all of this, she'll probably go work at some weapons company, like some cog in the military-industrial complex that those same lies help build up. So I really can't handle any of the moral outrage. There are, two, there are two things to this. One, she would be considered the ev- most evil person on the planet by the same people that are interviewing her now. But yeah. now that she fits the, she, she provides a service, which is anti-Trump. Yeah. And then to your point, uh, it was, it, it, 
it was about Trump kind of cleaning house. The Cheney, mm -hmm. it was like, he didn't like the Cheney. Uh, yeah, I mean, I have a theory on that. It goes from uh, uh, George Bush to, he was eight years as, as uh, vice president, four years president, George Bush, Clinton, all the, the whole family's in there. And that, you know, it all comes back to the military industrial complex. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I bad enough them if you don't follow at Mercuria on Twitter. Uh, I'll say some stuff about them, but then they invent stuff like the the, the ninja bomb that cuts Amin al zawahiri into 10,000 pieces w without an explosive. That's dope. I don't want to get all technical. That's awesome. <laughs> yes, it <laughs> yeah. is. I have one in my garage. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> I use it to make a salad, though, because I'm a peaceful person. <laughs> hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News' YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.